we make a lot. I don't do a deal that I don't get twenty thousand dollars up front, non-refundable option deposit. But remember, so you, I'm working on quarter million dollar houses and up. Right. So you said twenty. So that's that would be ten percent down, give and take. Uh, well, I I don't do the ten uh, the percent thing, but I'm telling you, if I can't get at least twenty up front, I don't. I really aren't interested in doing it. So like that it. means nicer houses, nicer areas, and the higher priced house, the bigger the non-refundable deposit. Hey guys, Jamel Gibbs here. Welcome to another podcast episode. Today, we have a very special guest. He's known as the godfather of real estate. Now, a couple of months ago, we were at a uh, mastermind summit in Tampa. So today, what I wanted to do was open you guys' mind up to the world of creative real estate investing and terms. And uh, I'd like to pick Ron's brain and, and talk about mm. what's working for him in his business. Ron, what's going on? Man, it's a beautiful day here in Jacksonville, Florida, and I'm sitting here talking to you, and that's going to be kind of fun because I love it when people turn into stars like you and go out and start spreading the word and letting everybody know that there's a world beyond making a living at a job. That's right. That's right. And, you know, if it wasn't for guys like you and, you know, uh, other educators out there, a lot of us wouldn't even be here today uh, doing what we do. Mm -hmm. So, you know, what, mm -hmm. what you've uh, been a part of starting, you know, it, it turned into this big thing where you have a lot of educators today and a lot of real estate investors. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we're, we're forever grateful for, for, uh, for that type of information as well. So well, uh, you all that means me? is that I'm old, Jamel. That's all that means. <laughs> <laughs> but I did for 37 years now. And, you know, I train the trainers who train the trainers who train the trainers today. So that's, some people call me Moses. <laughs> I'm still here. Of course, some people think I'm dead, you know. <laughs> you know, that, that's fantastic, man. Young at heart and uh, still, still alive and kicking. So, so we love that. We love Work that. every day. That's right, man. So you want to tell them a little bit about yourself, how you got started in real estate? Yeah, well, very little about myself. I started in 1982 as a dead broke auto mechanic and trying to figure out what I wanted to be when I grew up. And I knew it wasn't fixing cars, so um, it really all started with a washing machine that I couldn't afford to buy my wife when I came home. 17 years already married, four kids, and I couldn't buy my wife a washing machine. So frankly, that aggravated me to the point to where I made the decision, I'm just not going to do this for the rest of my life and started looking and found real estate. And what attracted to me was you don't need money or credit. I didn't have either one of those. So I went to a seminar like most other people, Jamel. And next thing you know, three weeks later, I got my first little check on a wholesaling deal. And that began a whole new career for me. And then over the years has uh, created a whole, a lot of careers for a whole lot of people. Now today's my students teach students who teach students. So all because I made that decision to attend that one seminar that evening that I almost didn't make. Wow. So you started off in the business in 1982. And I have to tell you, Ron, don't feel bad about this. I was born in 1981. <laughs> but, uh, well, okay. Now, now, so you've been doing this just as long as I've been alive pretty much. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, so you started off as a wholesaler, you got your first wholesale check. Yeah. What intrigued you to start looking at other forms of real estate investing? Uh, well, it was a lot of years. I was wholesaling and I was rehabbing probably for 20 years, Jamel. I just didn't know any better. And along the way, I discovered that there are other ways. And today, I'm the leader in the terms industry, which I pretty much created. And, you know, my, when, I, when I teach today, I'm teaching people the fastest and the easiest way to make money in real estate, but most importantly, the more profitable way, and that's uh, the terms business. Now, look, nothing wrong with wholesaling. Because that's a fast, frankly, wholesaling is the fastest way to get a check. Problem is, so much competition out there today. The market is crazy, and there's so many greater fools paying way too much money for the properties. It's a whole lot harder to find. I've done at least a thousand wholesale deals. Today, I focus on the other side of the business. We call it the pretty house business, which means terms. In other words, in your world, you pay cash, or you agree to pay cash, and you flip the contract, or you buy it and you rehab it. Okay? In my world, we don't pay cash. And in fact, there's little or no cash needed and we buy it and we don't rehab it because it's already rehabbed when we buy it generally. And the goal is, is not to cash out of it immediately because in the pretty house business, we get multiple paydays. We get a great big multi-thousand dollar non-refundable option deposit when we put a tenant buyer in the house. 
They're responsible for doing all the work for as long as they're in it or until they buy it. We get a monthly spread between what we collect and what we pay. And then we get a back end payday if and when they go get a loan and cash it out. And if they move, we get to go do it again because they will forfeit their deposit if they do not buy. And that's clearly disclosed because we close with attorneys. So no, you know, we don't have these legal comebacks. And the longer you keep the property, in fact, your listeners ought to write this one down. The old guy said so. The longer you own a house, the more money you will make. No exception. So we continually get cash flow after we've already been paid a big check up front, which, by the way, is usually as big as any money you're going to make on rehabbing a house, without all the grief. We get monthly spread forever, for as long as we own the house, which is called residual income. Do the job once, keep getting paid. Can't get that on wholesaling or rehabbing. We get depreciation, which lowers our taxes. We get appreciation, which creates more wealth. We get future paydays, depending on what the tenant buyers do. We have all the benefits of real estate, not just one check. Now, today, I hardly ever wholesale a house. I rehab two or three a year. Um, still do it, still teach it, but not as a business. I do it as a bonus. 90% of the real estate business I do today is in the pretty house business, avoiding all the costly entanglements and the risk because we never, ever guarantee debt, ever. That's the biggest mistake anyone can make in a real estate business is guaranteeing debt. Therefore, we don't make promises we can't keep, and we don't write big checks unless we know clearly how to get that big check back quickly. We close with attorneys. Everything is documented. So I've taken all the risk out of the business, Jamel, all of it. Awesome. Remember, we're just lease optioning them, okay? Um, most of the people who we lease option to do not buy the house. They move out, forfeit their deposit, and we do it again. There's no really not wholesaling to it, but it's the same uh, philosophy. Because mm -hmm. in wholesaling, you're just flipping a contract. In this case, we're actually buying the house and maintaining ownership of it. But it's in good condition when I buy them. Sometimes they need a little bit of work. Sometimes they need none, which is the beautiful part about it. So um, it's more like retailing than wholesaling. More like but, retailing. Yeah, but I stay in it, you see. When you wholesale a house, you get out of it. Right. Therefore, you have no future revenue. And you got to keep working. And money will never keep coming in when you don't feel like working anymore in the ugly house side. Consequently, in the pretty house side, you keep getting revenue as long, and while you're building wealth and retirement. Over and over again. All with the awesome. same deals. So how are you going about finding these deals? Uh, in oh, there's, the there's several ways. Pretty much the same way you go about finding ugly houses, except we don't use the MLS, which is the nemesis of a wholesaler's world right now. Because if you're buying deals out of the MLS, you've got a hard road to hoe. Because there's so many greater fools paying way too much out there right now, probably generated by the TV shows. I mean, I used to sit at my desk with an iPad and, and buy all the houses that I wanted without leaving my desk. And I was 19, or 19, <laughs> see how old I am? Uh, 2016 <laughs> and earlier. I mean, after that, you just couldn't do it anymore. To this very day, I don't even look in the MLS anymore. So you focus on a lot of uh, uh, fizzbo. fizzbos. So, so therefore, we find them the same way we find pretty houses. Uh, same marketing tools. We run ads on uh, Facebook. We run ads on free uh, websites. Uh, I have a whole floor of virtual assistants here that call leads for our students. Uh, literally, we have a scouring service that grabs them off of the Internet if they're advertising for sale by owner. My Virtual assistants calls them, get the property information sheet, and then the students just got to make one quick call using my scripts to determine whether the seller is in or out. So uh, the VAs do a lot of the work, and then we have this daily feed. People in our gold club get these things every single day uh, for a lousy $59 a month. So other than that, I teach them to also get offline because it's more about quality than it is quantity. And anybody who is advertising on the internet is, is a low uh, quality lead. But anybody you get to call you is a high quality lead, as you, as you well know. Well, it's the same thing in the pretty house business. So now it comes down to if I want to buy the junkers, I just target my marketing to the lower priced areas where they're at. If I want to buy pretty houses, I target my marketing to the above medium price and the higher priced areas. In the pretty house business, we start at about 200, 250 and go up. In your ugly house business, you're well below that in most cities. So it's, we use the same techniques. We just target differently.
Gotcha. So when you start getting these leads in, obviously you have a screening process to tell, uh, let, let's just say you run into a, a certain type of lead that uh, will fit the wholesale like criteria. Mm -hmm. uh, would you target, obviously you're screening these leads, so you're going to target your attention toward wholesaling in that case. If I'm looking for ugly houses, I'm going to target the lower priced properties. Mm -hmm. because that's where the ugly houses are. You know that as well as I do. Yep. 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 Um, and however, in the terms business, I want to go from the medium price above. I mean, the higher price, the more money we make because we're not going to have risk anyway. That's right. The dollar, the more dollars you all are in, the more stick to you. That's right. So if I can buy a half a million dollar house with little or no money out of my pocket, I know I'm going to get at least a fifty, sixty thousand dollar non refundable option deposit on that house. Mm -hmm. Whereas if I'm trying to do a terms deal on a hundred thousand dollar house, I'm going to I'm going to play. I'm going I'm to work very hard to try to get a $5,000 deposit. So I, I, I really don't want to be in the terms business unless I'm in the nice, beautiful homes and beautiful neighborhoods. And incidentally, there's about 50 times more of them than there are ugly houses. Right. And obviously, like you said, big. Yeah. The, the higher the price, the more the profit. Yeah, so, correct. So if someone wanted to get started in, in the terms business, mm -hmm. uh, in addition to their wholesale business, obviously, like you said, focus on the houses where uh, mm -hmm. you know, you're above medium, uh, price. And in addition to that, uh, what would they do in order to really get like in order to screen the leads, what type of questions are they asking in order to screen leads to well, draw out the type of deal that we, ha that we have a know? property information sheet. Okay. That asks the questions about the house, like any property information sheet. But in that sheet, we have a terms question. Uh, one of them is, would you sell for what you owe when it is applicable? And that's only if there's a small gap between the loan and the asking price. And another one is, would you consider uh, taking a monthly payment or letting us make your monthly payment until you're paid off in full? And that's a terms question. If the answer is a yes to that, we call that a yes lead. However, there are more no leads than there are yes leads, so it doesn't matter if it's a yes or no. I have a script now to where you just simply call and read my script. It's been time tested and proven and really, really works. Uh, and that script will lead you to the conclusion as to whether this person is going to work with you on terms or not. And if so, what terms? Because we, we ask the questions, Jamel, that leads the seller to make us an offer. We don't make offers to seller. They make offers to us by answering our question. You want to hear that script? Sure. <laughs> you, want be, you want to be my seller? Let's do it. All right. You're not going to be a pain in the neck, are you? Maybe. Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> All right. My first question would be, well, Jamal, if we could uh, agree upon um, the rest of the terms, what's the least you could take for this house? Uh, 265000 bucks. Okay. So really, is that the best you can do? I may be able to do two fifty five. Okay. Well, you just gave me ten grand in three seconds. So, All right. <laughs> Let's go to the second question. We usually buy with nothing down, okay? Okay. Um, I was thinking, I was thinking if I could get a little bit down just to kind of secure. What's a little, Jamel? Maybe five grand. Well, I'll tell you what, let me come out and take a look at the house and then uh, I can tell you or yay or nay on that uh, right there. Okay. That sounds All fair. Right. That's All fair. Right. Last question is, it says here your payment is 1728 a month. Um, I, I, I'll pay that payment until I pay you off in full. All right. Okay. That, that's, right. that's fair. Well, you just became a hot prospect, sir, based on you answer, the way you answered my question. By the way, think about it. Who made whom the offer? I made you the offer. You yes, asked you me did. the question. Yes, you did. So the next <laughs> thing I'm going to do is to go to my appointment script and pre-screen you further before I go taking the trouble to drive all the way across town to meet you. That only took me about 100 wasted visits. That appointment script says, well, are you, uh, Jamal, Jamal, are you the only owner? Uh, I own it with my wife. Okay, well, I, I, I would need both of you to be there when I arrive, okay? That's fair. I could do that. All right. All right. Uh, all right. One last question. If I come out to your house and, and um, I like the house and we agree on the terms, are you ready to sell your house now and get some paperwork done while I'm there? Ron, I need to sell this house like yesterday. So if okay. uh, the terms look good, right. we, can, we can probably get something done. Okay. Well, I'm done with my pre-screening. All we got to do is set an appointment, sir. And that's it. That's it. That's it. See, you're wow. the kind of seller I'm going to go out and see. Gotcha. So the type of sellers, obviously, that will be opposite of me, you're not going to waste the time to go out nope. and see them. You wouldn't even make an offer over the phone? 
I never make offers over the phone. I ask questions over the phone. Ask questions over the phone. Only a fool would make an offer over the phone on a house he's never even seen. Mm -hmm. Now, look, if I'm in the wholesaling business, that might not be true. Okay. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> it's going to be so low, I can't, I can't lose. But right. in the pretty house business, uh, they know you haven't seen the house. And frankly, you're going to do nothing but disturb them make, and lose credibility if you try making offers on a house they know you haven't even seen yet. I like that concept. So, you know, take note of that, guys. Basically, when it comes to wholesaling, you, you hear a lot of guys say, hey, you can make an offer over the phone. Um, with the pretty house business, see, the thing is with wholesaling, you're going to get it so cheap that it doesn't even matter. That's that is correct. With the pretty house business, you really have to do your due diligence. So that's really important, important key note that Ron mentioned. Mm -hmm. so, well, due diligence mm -hmm. is not so much as I want to go see the house. Mm -hmm. And uh, by the way, when I get to the house, I'm going to get better terms than we got on the phone anyway. You just don't know it yet. All right. If there's anything else to discuss. Right. Because many times you would be shocked at how many people will, will say yes when you say, uh, I usually buy with nothing down, okay? You'll be absolutely shocked. <laughs> but if you ask that question any other way, you, you're not going to get the same answer. So the scripts are very carefully created, uh, but it's all in how you ask. So give an example and, of and that. So and by the time you get to the house, you already know whether you're going to buy it or not, but you might want to tweak the offer when you get there. So like uh, you said, how you, how you say stuff is really important. If, Very if, important. You know, if Very you, you kind of, like what you just did a second ago, you just kind of spoon fed me the answer. You that's, said, that's right. I buy with nothing down, right? And, and I, I got to say it like I mean it. Exactly. So that's really yeah. important. How you say stuff is, is really important. Say, Ron is well, let's, say, well, let's say you said no to that question and I got to come back. You say, no, I can't sell with nothing down. Well, okay. Well, how close to zero can you get? <laughs> I love that. Well, you've got to come back with an answer now, don't you? <laughs> we we'll play this game all day if you want. How close to zero can you get? <laughs> yeah. That's fantastic, man. So, so uh -huh. you, you ask the question in a way that you want the seller to say. Uh, Correct. You want the seller to agree with you pretty much. Correct. And right. then if you come back, answers. say that again. And give you good positive answers. Right. And, and don't push it too hard and try to over negotiate on the phone. You know, when you get the answers to those big three questions, you'll know whether you want to go to the house or not. Gotcha. So you're selling a $300,000 house and somebody wants $100,000 down. Are you going? No. No. So I'm going to get them to concede we're going to get closer to zero or I have no reason to go. I love that question. How close to zero can you get? Yeah, well, I'm going to swipe that if you, <laughs> if you don't mind. We swiped everything else. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right, man. <clears throat> so, so now let, let's talk about, so you're at the house now. You're talking mm -hmm. with the, uh, you're talking uh -huh. with the seller. You want to, you obviously want to get the price below uh -huh. what you negotiate, what you agreed upon over the phone. Or well, sometimes, the sometimes phone. Jamel, but sometimes you'd be surprised how much equity people give you right up front. Mm -hmm. They're asking prices here and, and, and uh, value is here. Uh, you don't do anything. You wonder, why are you giving away so much equity? Sometimes they don't know. Sometimes they don't care. So if there's a big enough gap there, I may or may not want to get it lower. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people are asking for almost full retail price, which shouldn't shock anybody. I am definitely want to get that lower. But every now, once in a while, you pay full price. Now, let's say you, you're in a situation where the seller owes more than what well, that would be rare, rare today, but I've probably done 150 of those uh, kind of deals. We call them axe deals. Mm -hmm. That's assignment of contracts and term system where we put them under contract, at least purchase them and assign it to, to the buyer. We don't do that anymore. Yeah, that's frankly, rare today. That's rare. And frankly, it's not, that's, that's really like wholesaling. You're just flipping it and getting out of it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, we, we make a lot, I don't do a deal that I don't get $20,000 up front, non-refundable option deposit. But remember- so you, I'm working on quarter million dollar houses and up. Right. So you said 20, so that's, that would be 10% down give and take. Uh, well, I, I don't do the 10 uh, the percent thing, but I'm telling you, if I can't get at least 20 up front, I don't, I really aren't interested in doing it. So like that it. means nicer houses, nicer areas and the higher priced house, the bigger the non-refundable deposit. And are you finding that buyers are, they're out there for these types of houses these days? Especially I mean, after, you, Yeah in all price ranges, but it, you'll be shocked how much money they'll put down because 
when we're getting out of the house, you know, we learn to keep our mouth shut just like we do when we're getting in. <laughs> Diarrhea of the mouth kills a lot of deals. <laughs> so when we're selling, we don't name the down payment. We don't name the monthly payment. We uh. do name the price. So as the buyers come in, they call a 24-hour answering service. And right on that short script is what's the most you can put down and what's the most you can pay per month. That information comes to us. And then if they got money, then obviously someone on my team will call them, ask them some more questions to determine whether they even have enough money to buy this house or basically lease option this house if we were to accept them. Because if they don't, there's no reason to give them the lockbox code, is there? That's right. So, so, so you're selling them before they even go to the house. And then when they get to the house, now we got them. They like the house. Now it's just a matter of uh, getting a little information on them. And two or three days later, we're handing them the keys and our attorney closes the lease option. It's really clear that if you don't buy this house, you'll forfeit this deposit, part of the agreement. And, uh, you know, most of them actually forfeit their deposit, believe it or not. I mean, now you mentioned the lease option with them. Yeah. So you're selling most of, your, most of these properties on lease option. I'm really not selling them, am I? I'm leasing them with an You're option. You're leasing them with an option to buy, correct. Except for Texans. Now, you Texans can't do that. You've got to buy them with owner financing and sell them with owner financing. Gotcha. And you're using an attorney to, uh, tie to, to lock up the deal with the uh, lease option as well. Well, not lock it up, but close it, which close is it. Right. very simple right. for them to do. We're giving them the answers to fill in the blanks on the agreement that we furnish them. That's all we do. But I want them to sit in front of the attorney to make sure everything is disclosed and understood. And then if there's any comeback later, the attorney closed it. And frankly, the case is over before it even gets started. Correct. Full disclosure, full documentation. And that's, with, that's when you're signing that agreement, you're getting it closed out at the same time. Are you doing that or are you? No, how are first, you, you got, first, you got to buy it. Mm -hmm. All right. And then when you find the tenant buyer and get them, and, and, and get them screened a little bit, then the, you send the information to the attorney. I look, right. after I accept the tenant buyer, I'm telling you, two to three days later, they're in the house. They're done. Yeah. Yeah. Quick. So turn, quick turn. I love it. Love it. So I love that because you're protected all the way around. Uh, you know, they can't say, I mean, this stuff is written in blood pretty much. <laughs> yeah. In fact, I make them sign it in blood. <laughs> I give them a pen to prick them. And the truth is there is no place where I don't go to closing. Uh, the, uh, I used to be buyer or seller sit in a room and look at each. We don't do that anymore. It's all mm -hmm. done electronically but I still like my tenant buyers to go sit in front of an attorney. So they feel like it was professionally done because it was, and you don't have any comeback, uh, come back later. You know, I forgot to address one question. A lot of people have about these non-refundable deposits. When somebody gives you a, a $20,000 deposit, remember it goes toward their down payment. And of course goes towards their purchase price. So it's really an earnest money deposit, but, when you get that $20,000, you know, it's your money. You don't have to put it in an escrow account and you do not have to bring it back to closing. It's your money. It just shows on the closing, uh, the documents that it's uh, already been received. So it's a credit. So you can do whatever you want to do with that money. People get that confused. They confuse it with a deposit that a realtor has to put into an escrow. One thing that I learned from you, mm -hmm. um, you put properties under trusts. I do. Obviously, when you're wholesaling, you don't necessarily need to do that. Why, why is that so significant? Well, when you're wholesaling, you're not buying the property. Mm -hmm. It's irrelevant. Your buyer's buying it from your seller, right? But I'm buying the property. So I'm going to buy it in the proper entity, and that's called a land trust or uh, legally referred to as a grantor revocable trust. And I've been doing it for 37 years, and they're all 50 states. Uh, we do it in. And of course, you know, there's a, always a plenty of flack from people who don't understand it, tell you not to do it. And we fight that all the time. I don't care. I don't need anybody's permission to put my property into a, a trust, uh, including the sellers. And banks cannot call a loan, dude. It's against federal law. So um, what, what are you asking me? What are the benefits of it? Yeah. So what, what are the benefits of it? And all right. you know, do you need all an right. attorney to set it up? No, heck no. Number one, we have privacy because the uh, deed goes from the seller to your trust. Nowhere on any public records anywhere does it show who the beneficial interest is of the trust. So nobody knows who owns the trust. In your filing cabinet at home is the only place it's even written. Number two, you have um, lien attachment protection, meaning if the house is in a trust, 
and you own the trust, a lien against you would not attach to this house because you don't own the house. Trust owns the house. You just own the trust, including an IRS tax lien. Uh, if you own it in your own name, any kind of a lien that comes recorded against you is automatically on that, on that property. Number three, if I wanted to sell you a house that I have in a trust and you understand trust, all I got to do is give you an assignment of beneficial interest and you now own the trust. Nothing changes downtown. There are no closing costs. Nobody even knows this transfer took place until you report it to your CPA at the end of the year. And number four, um, people die, trust don't die. So when there are more than one people in a trust and that one of them dies, there's nothing to do. There's no probate. The world doesn't even, I mean, the title, titles in the trust, owners of the, of the trust, beneficial interest can be changed internally. There's nothing to do. Uh, especially important when an elderly person is going to check into an assisted living or a nursing home, that title better be out of their name well before they check in or the nursing home is probably going to wind up with a home. Really, really important stuff there. So, yeah. you know, number one, you're holding on to these properties in a trust. Yep. You're getting all the benefits of the the yep. of owning the property without actually owning the property. Correct? Well, no, you own the trust that owns the property. Right. Correct. Exactly. I don't so, want any, I don't I don't want anybody to fuse this with asset protection now. Mm -hmm. This is just part of estate planning, and of course includes a little of asset protection. But just remember, if anybody finds out you own the trust, they can take the trust just as well as they can take it if you own it in your own name. Gotcha. Uh, but it has gotcha. so many benefits. There is no downside into this. There's no taxes. There's no ID. There's no federal filing. There's no tax return on a trust like there is on an LLC. There is no downside except for public ignorance, which, you know, I would might consider as an upside. Correct. Correct. So, so you're obviously right now in this day and age, you're doing nothing but terms deals. You said you do some rehabbing, you do some well, wholesaling. Actually not true. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, um, I have a commercial property mastermind group now that I share deals with and they send me projects from all over the country. And I, of course, am the brains of the outfit and usually the money of the outfit. I am constantly working on commercial deals gotcha. daily now since I started that group this past November. And literally I've probably received 40 to 45 projects <laughs> just in the last couple of months. And um, we're in fact, we're closing on our, first two uh, this month, and I got several more very close to getting contracts on. So that's keeping me busy. But yet we still buy, I still buy a couple of houses a month putzing around in a comatose state because I don't do anything. In my world today, Jamel, it's never been more automated. There's almost nothing to do in the house business except get a system set up for yourself, which we provide with, to our students. They're all, the systems are all in place. They don't have to do anything but plug and play. And then make decisions. And that's all I do. When I buy houses, I decide who I want to buy from and who I want to sell to. The rest is all done for me. So I say about 90% of my real estate income comes from the terms of business, yes, because I'm not actively seeking ugly houses like you are. They just pop up while I'm looking for pretty ones. Gotcha. So if you had to give, let's say, a simple three-step process for someone to get started in the terms business, what would right. your, your top well, three steps be? I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, and, I'm, and I, I mean this sincerely, for, for you to try to get started in real estate and bypass the training is a stupid, foolish business decision, as you well know. 100% you're, you're either going to get trained from people who know what the heck they're doing, or you're going to get trained from the School of Hard Knocks. And man, that's where I got my seminars from. <laughs> the lessons were <laughs> ugly, ugly, ugly. <laughs> so we have a uh, summit coming up. Uh, an, our annual convention at the um, uh, March 31st through April the 4th. Um, that's where I would go right now. If you get this message in time, you, it's the least expensive way you can get trained as anywhere on the planet. And it is huge, massive amount of uh, training going on there. Uh, and it's five days and it's cheap, cheap, cheap. And you guys talk me into giving your listeners even a really, really cheap, cheap, cheaper price. Uh, but here's the cool thing we're going to be doing there. We're going to be instructing all of our attendees, and there will be over 500 of them, to bring property information sheets. And, of course, we provide them with the sheets, and we provide them with the training to go get some sheets filled out. 
and if they want to get one of our virtual assistants, we'll do it for them. They bring these to there, and I have 12 mentors that, that, uh, are, are, that work for our students one-on-one. All of them will be there calling these sheets for them and trying to make these deals like we do every time we do a live event. So literally, we make deals for the students who attend while they watch us call the sellers and make deals for them. <laughs> you can't ask for anything more. The last couple, three events, we've done over $3 million worth of potential profit. And of course, they bring hundreds of leads in. 12 people are calling them. Uh, so it's an incredible event, but you've never seen anything like this. I mean, where have you ever gone to a seminar and walked out with deals worth twenty, forty, fifty, hundred thousand dollars or more? I mean, literally over three million dollars worth of net profits just from the last event alone. This one would be bigger. So, um, that's insane. You got that link? You got that link there? Yeah. So, uh, if you guys want to check that out, um, if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, the link will be in the description. If you're listening on the podcast, it's reieducationacademy.com/slash Ron. Again, R-E-I, educationacademy.com slash Ron. Definitely okay. check that out. I mean, where else can you guys go and have other mentors? You have 12 of them at the event doing deals that's, for the students. That's just the mentors. That's not the speakers. Yeah. <laughs> We've got some incredible speakers there. Really, really high quality folks. Big, huge faculty. Back, back, not including me. I'm teaching about half of it myself. But, I mean, just go there and you'll see a massive amount of goodies. that I mean, We're going to give away over $100,000 worth of cash and prizes, man. Insane. I mean, I mean it's a, it's a, it's a once-in-a-lifetime event for you. Now, look, um, listeners, make note because it's going to be expiring very quickly. This event right now is priced at $497 dirt cheap. Uh, and we even throw in a banquet in that for you and coffee every morning. And $200 for your guest. You bring as many as you like. While you're listening and before the date expires, when you go to that site, <laughs> I can't hardly believe I'm saying this, but Jamel is covering part of your cost. You're down now to half price, $249 and $100 for each guest. And, and look, if you, if, and if you got, I don't know, till the end of whatever to back out. So mm -hmm. uh, it's totally refundable. In fact, you go and spend two days here. You want out, you're out. We'll refund your whole money. But trust me, you ain't going to. <laughs> and incidentally, <laughs> this is in Las Vegas. Las Vegas, okay? We start on March 31st and we'll end on April 4th and it's nonstop all the way. And don't make any evening plans for shows because we work right up in fact, We have our own show. We have our own banquet. We have an entertainment night. We have a networking night. We have a casino. Everything's going on there. Go check it out. Half price for you. But you got to get on there before the date expires when you go to the forum. Guys, reieducationacademy.com slash Ron. Definitely, definitely don't even think about it. Go and do. You know, you guys, action is what's going to separate you from the pack of the wolves. Mm -hmm. You have to get out there and do. I, I talk, about it, talk about it all the time. You know, you can sit and, and, and watch others succeed or you can be a part of the crowd. You Amen, have to brother. take Amen, action. brother. By the way. You write it off. It's tax deductible, including the whole trip. And it's <laughs> so it's basically free. <laughs> oh, it's more than tax free. deductible, more than free. Well, yeah, you'll get way more stuff checking in than we're gonna pay for this event. That's right. That's right. So if you had to give our listeners some final advice, mm -hmm. uh, knowing that you know now is a great time, not yesterday, not tomorrow. Right now is a great time mm -hmm. to be in real estate. What would that av advice be? Probably be careful to whom you listen because the whole world is full of dream stealers trying to take yours away from you and get you down there wallowing in pity with them because they're willing, not willing to do anything. Everybody's criticizing, condemning, and complaining. And anybody who tells you that this real estate stuff won't work is broke <laughs> <laughs> or tried it. and Crab in a up. box mentality. Trust me when I tell you broke people cannot help you get rich. Okay. <laughs> You better come Say hanging around the rich folks. <laughs> Maybe it'll rub off on you. And by the way, at this summit, we will parade success across the truth like you will never believe. I promise you. You're going to see people all over this country who have started from nowhere. And some of them have become multimillionaires. And some of them have gone on to become teachers as well. Awesome. So Got to awesome. start somewhere. Awesome. Mr. Ron LeGrand, it has been a real pleasure having you on this uh, podcast today. 
And I'm looking forward to doing a lot more stuff with you. And uh, I'm sure our listeners, again, guys, if you haven't even thought about it, you need to not think about it and take the action and go out there and go to REI Education Academy, R-E-I Education Academy dot com slash Ron. You need a shorter URL. I do. (laughs) I was saying that too. Yeah. Um, as I'm saying it, yeah, uh, you're absolutely right. Okay. But uh, All right, check out the, the link in the description, guys. It's been a real pleasure having you, and we're looking forward to having you on board again. See you soon. Talk to you later.